Okay, so I'm here with Mason the Dragon Jones. Mason, how you doing? Yeah, all good. Thanks for having me on. Good. Um, busy time for you, I'm sure, at the minute with um, obviously signing with the UFC pretty recently. How exciting has that been? Yeah, also, also obviously biggest organization in the world. Something I've always uh, visualized myself being signed with and fighting under their banner. So, yeah, it's, it's an amazing time. It's just non-stop work now. I'm pushing through yeah. Christmas, ready for a, uh, an early start in the new year. So, yeah, I, I really can't wait to get in and then out and sort of make my mark. Yeah, uh, Talk to me about your um, beginnings in mixed martial arts because you're quite well-rounded, aren't you? Yeah, so I started in kickboxing when I was seven. Then I moved on to judo when I was 12. Um, made my way into the Welsh and GB teams. I started jiu-jitsu when I was 14, 15, 14. Um, Thai boxing and boxing when I was 17 and then Taekwondo when I was 19 so I brought quite a varied sort of um, skill set uh, I got black belts in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Judo and Kickboxing um, as well as an extensive Thai and Taekwondo background um, I've also competed for Wales GB um, in Judo uh, sort of local, regional, and um, international level. I compete all over Europe and all sorts of places. So, yeah, I've done it, sort of. Um, I've been training for a long time. I've been training over eight, 18 years. Um, I've got two pro wins and 10 pro wins in MMA. Mm -hmm. So two pro wins in boxing and 10 in the MMA, as well as three amateur wins. So, um, yeah, do you mean it's, it's going well? One thing that stands out to me when I think about you, and this is evident from watching your new YouTube videos as well, um, you've got an incredible mindset to be successful in the sport. You all, you know where you want to go. You always have this vision in your mind of like, by this point, I want to be wherever. Well, I'm I'm the greatest one five five fighter on the planet. That's the way I see myself. Um, all that's left to do is to make everyone else see that and to make it a reality. So I, that's all that matters. That's that's the way it has to be, and that's the way it's going to be. Yeah, and. Um, do you feel any additional pressure? It doesn't seem like it, but because of your, obviously your really good record, you're still undefeated 10 and 0. Do you, does that bring a bit more pressure to you? No, I'm, the way I see it, I'm 0 and 0 in the UFC at the moment now. So it's a fresh start. And it's, um, that's, that's holding sort of, that's all that matters. Um, so yeah, I don't feel any pressure with that. It's just going in, in there, enjoying myself and putting on the best performance and the best version you can be. Like that's sort of the hard part is showing exactly what you can do because you'll never reach that that full percent potential. But it's just showing enough so that you, people really start to see like your credentials and how good you are. And I, I really am looking forward to putting on a, a world class performance in, um, in in my debut. You mentioned your debut there. Obviously, your last fight in cage was at well was at welterweight. Is the plan well, yeah. to move back down to one fifty five? Yeah. To be fair, when I fought at um, welterweight, I basically fought. Uh, at wild weight as a 155er like I was um, I basically was doing the same weight cut I did for 155 so I wasn't far off to be honest I think after weigh-ins I went up to about 80 kilos and I didn't go over that so it's the same for when I hit lightweight I was just a lightweight in, in their final wild weights yeah um, do you have any sort of date in mind about when you want to make this debut yes yeah that sounds like you know something that we don't <laughs> yeah I um, I can't say any, any, anything yeah, unfortunately yeah. Do you know who it's going to be, though? Yes. When are we going to know? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, to be fair, I'm waiting on contracts. So as soon yeah. as I get that signed, they're a little bit behind. As soon as I get that signed, we'll go ahead. But I've agreed, he's agreed. Um, and we've got a date agreed, so it's all sorted. Is it a name that people are going to know when we see the name again? Yeah. To be fair, any, any, anyone in the UFC yeah. um, is, is a big name. So Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so how's training camp going, then? You yeah, really good. Um, camp's going well. Um, we're non-stop. I, like, I, I'm training three to four times a day. I get yeah. um, a Sunday off and I get a half day Tuesday off. So it's pretty much non-stop. Obviously, with COVID at the moment now, we've gone into the stage now where everything's in bubbles, everything's selective. Um, I've stopped leaving the house unnecessarily. I've stopped meeting people unnecessarily. Um, distance myself from my friends. Uh, distance myself from extended family. Just because we're reaching that point now where um, obviously a COVID interaction would cause a lot of problems where okay. you're on, it could have been dealt with. So yeah, it's just um, pushing through and um, smashing through Christmas and 
going out the other side and smashing two worlds to come. You mentioned the problems there that a COVID interaction would cause, and UFC have had quite a few problems with that. Is that something yeah. they've already relayed to you about what they're going to do? Well, part of my medical is I have to get a COVID test, and it's not a COVID test deciding whether you have COVID now. It's also a COVID test to see if you have the antibodies yeah. for the COVID. So, um, yeah, we'll see. It's just another obstacle, another thing that's going to get in the way, but it's just part of the process. Is it a bit, because you've had a couple of fights already during the pandemic, is it a different experience, both in training camp and fight week? No, not really. Um, two fights this, this, this camp has sort of been in, in the mix of the pandemic but yeah the isolation is a bit different but um it's nothing new do you know I mean it's it's nothing that's all getting in the way it doesn't sort of make uh weight cuts or anything more difficult it just it's just part of the process so it it is what it is that's the best way to look at it you mentioned your last two fights there two fights two first round finishes two world titles how does that feel yeah good um obviously cage royce titles so um it sort of set the bar for where I am next. Um, and I know exactly what my eyes are set on next. So um, it's just eyes up on that. I'm at the bottom of the mountain again now. So it's back climbing to get the peak. And um, I, I know what I have to do to get there. I know how good I need to be. And I know how fast I have to improve. And um, I really can't wait. I mean, like the the sort of more obstruction, the the better the opposition, the better vision of me you'll see. And better, the faster I, um, I improve. So I really can't wait just for personal um, improvement and, like I said, just to show the world how good I am. When you won the um, lightweight title and then you get the call from Graham Boylan, he wants you to move up to fight for the welterweight title, what's that like? So that didn't happen. Um, I won the lightweight title and then I asked to fight out of pocket oh, for the yeah. welterweight title. Um, I called him out um, after um, Reese McGee's fight uh, got cancelled because obviously he signed the UFC on a short notice fight. Um, so I knew that that space was there. So I took the opportunity and um, I, I ran with it. And obviously you, you saw exactly what I could do. Yeah. Uh, I walked down and brought it down and knocked him out in four and a half minutes. And that was really incredible to see you do that to the current champion, moving up a weight class as well. And like so early into your career as well. Yeah, Ad, Ad, Adam was a jet. He was um, 12 and one. He was on a seven fight win streak. And obviously um, he had only previously lost to um, Aaron Khalid. And the other thing was, like, obviously, with the, that, that belt being a vacating title, it was just sort of the opportunity was there to take the two. Uh, like, um, obviously, there was no big contenders at Wildweight at, at, at the time. I didn't really see any contenders at Lightweight for the Lightweight title at the time. And I wanted that next big step up. I, want, I, I didn't want to go backwards. I didn't want them to sort of have to pull someone in for me just to smash up. I wanted to prove that I could step up and I could, I could beat these, these caliber people. For, for me, beating Adam Proctor was showing that I can beat UFC level guys. That's all, all it was, beating big, big lightweights. That's all I saw a fight was at. And that's all I um, sort of went in there with a the mindset at, that I can beat big lightweights. And that's what I did. I beat a big lightweight. Yeah, so obviously in the last few weeks, you've set up this YouTube channel as well. Um, yep. I knew about you, but I've learned so much more about you from watching these videos. Um, I watched them all. It's really great. Um, Thank you very much. How do you... or do you think this is a good opportunity for you to kind of engage with the fans in a time when you can't do that as much? Well, we're, we're struggling a little bit, obviously, with the COVID stuff. We've had a few people, um, we've had a few people actually reporting us for break um, for breaching COVID regulations. We yeah. haven't actually breached. Um, so we've had to, my coaches and teams had to deal with that a little bit. So um, most of the stuff over Christmas now into the new year is going to be mm-hmm. sort of self-recorded until um, the new year starts and we can see what we can do. But it, it was, it was just a, a sort of a mutual step for me. It's something I want to do for the last couple of years, but I haven't really been in a financially place to do it or obviously able to do it. So I tried doing it myself and I didn't really like the outcome. So I've got a good um, couple of people around me who are helping with it and they're doing amazing. Sorry, so it's something that I want to grow towards. Like eventually I want to put sort of weekly or daily up- updates on and make it so that you see videos daily, um, show me more in, in the camp and sort of showing full days. We'll get to a point where you see a full day of training, you see what we go through, see all the um, the eat, eating parts, what we get up to in our off time, um, sort of a full look in, into it. And um, it, it's just, a, it's another avenue stream. It's another way for me to sort of um, help support my coaching team and um, help support our, um, that lightweight title goal. Yeah. Are they going to be allowed out to uh, fight week when you go? Do you know that yet or not? No, de- um, de- definitely not. I think, I think it'll just mostly be my coaching team and they were hoping to try and get some family there. But even if they do allow uh, a crowd at the venue, which I'm hoping they will, it's only going to be limited. So obviously limited is space. If I can get tickets, it's going to be for family yeah. and sort of, sort yeah. of 
close friends first before obviously filming. Uh, most of it, I think we're going to try and film. This week's videos coming out is should be out Sunday. Um, show some on Monday where I film myself. So um, uh, that was weird. Um, obviously, see if how that turns out. And then we're going to try and film a lot more personal sort of style of videos as well. So um, some they've pre-recorded some stuff, and I'm going to record some stuff as we go, and um, we'll see how that looks as a blend until obviously the new year. Okay, so you've been in involved in martial arts for a while, but you made your pro debut in 2017. What changes have you noticed in the way the UK scene is between then and now, essentially? Well, I picked a good time to actually get on board. Um, when I got on, there wasn't sort of, it was just starting to take off. Um, there was no Welsh fighters signed to the UFC. Um, I know that um, Brett was fighting on Titan, trying to get a, a fight. You had Marshman, who was... Um, uh, were his way through cage warriors and obviously jack was the same um so when i started i picked a good time um i sort of managed to um get in when wales was really starting to kick their way through the door and um i just sort of it just all worked out to me obviously if i hadn't had made that change when i did i wouldn't be able to have fought this year where uh, i've been lucky enough to have two pro fights where not many people have fought at all and um yeah it's, it's been um, from strength to strength it's uh just part of the ladder and um Obviously, I'm signed the biggest promotion in the world. And looking at where everything is at the moment and the way the situation is, I don't think I would have been signed for another year if um, I didn't make those choices I did. Yeah. Um, you obviously mentioned the other guys there. The goal has got to be to bring a UFC card to Wales now, hasn't it? I'm more focused on winning that belt. Like, um, when you win that belt, then you can sort of bring it back to Wales. Until then, I don't think um, it's sort of um, it's an option at the, mo at the moment. So um, I'm just focused on getting in there and showing that I'm the best in the world. But how has it been like looking at all three of those guys who obviously signed with the UFC before you, obviously Brett's gone to Bellator now, but seeing those guys in the UFC, I don't know if you know those guys or not that well, but like, what's it like as a motivation for you? So I do know quite well, actually. Um, Jack Shaw and Jack Marshall only live about 10 minutes away from me. They live in the same town from one of my gyms are based. Really? Um, they started in the same gym I started at in um, Everville. Um, Brett Johns was on the same Welsh duo team as me, mm -hmm. so I knew him for a good few years. Like to be honest, we've all known each other a long time, and we all sort of egg each other on, and um, we all support each, each other. And um, yeah, I think they've all made great choices. Like obviously Marshman, um, he's on the next stage of his career now. Um, Jack is making a tear through the UFC. Sure, um, Brett is obviously going to make a tear through belt. Uh, at all. I think that was a good choice for him. Um, obviously, you've got Corey McKenna, who also trained out yeah. Larry. She's making a tear for the women's division. So, yeah, we're really showing what we can do. Like, you've got a couple of us coming through now, and it's just going to be more and more. So, is it the race now to see who's going to be the first world champion from Wales, right? Oh, 100%. To be fair, I um, I focus on um, just obviously being in a race with everyone in, in my division. Like, I'm in the, the, the strongest division in the whole UFC. That's mm -hmm. the way I see it at. It's um, it's a sharks, absolute shark pool. So um, I'm just focused on beating everyone who's in front of me, and um, just showing that I'm I'm a contender and showing that I'm, like I said, the best fighter in the world. Yeah. Um. So obviously, <laughs> UFC MMA in this country still kind of getting off the ground a little bit. What do you think needs to be done to make it more mainstream in the UK and obviously in Wales as well? To be fair, I, I don't think anything needs to change. Um, the, the more the sport grows, the more people you'll get pulled across to it and the, and the more you'll build. Um, it's just all about time. Um, I saw Matt's route, really. Like, we've got, there's a lot of young boys I'm training with now who are absolute beasts. And I know the same for, like, Cleary Combat. They've got some boys coming through who are monsters. And uh, Matt Academy's the same. They've got some young boys there who are beasts. And it's just the way it's going to be. Like, the younger generations are just coming through and they'll just, when they come through, there's, there's always that next wave, always that next wave. So it, it's just about staying at, at the top and riding those waves through. Yeah. Um, do you think, obviously, you're at the UFC now, so do you think they should be doing a bit more in the UK and Europe? Or do you think the shows they're putting on in the UK at the minute is enough? Um, to be fair, I'm not really worried about the shows they put on in the UK. I fought in the UK for... Um, most of my adult life, um, I'd, I'd like to fight abroad. Like, fighting in the U.S. will be good. And um, I think to be big in the U.K., you have to crack the U.S. market. So to crack the U.S. market, you have to appeal to the U.S. fans. Um, 
so because a lot of it's all about pay per views and stuff. Like you have to be a big mark, you have to be a big product and be able to sell. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to to get abroad and to really show who I am. And then yeah, like when that that happens and you've got someone who can headline, like you've got Jack, you've got me, um, obviously and who I am, Corey. We can really drag those shows back to the UK. Yeah, um, I want to say thank you for the time today, uh, Mason. How can people find you? Yeah, so um, Instagram's the best. Get in touch with me um, at Mason Jones ninety five. Um, my Twitter's there as well at Mason Jones nine ninety five, and obviously my Facebook page is Mason the Dragon Jones on Facebook, the athlete page. Also, go on YouTube, check Mason Jones MMA. Um, we're posting videos regularly and you'll get to see an inside scoop. Any questions, anything like that, feel free to message me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Yep. All right. Thank you for the time today. Best of luck you, next year with whoever it's going to be against. Yes. Um, look forward to watching you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, mate.